The thing was that I had expected that I would be able to solve DP problems in contest. Where did that expectation come from? You're, this is a, one of the reasons that people's expectations don't exactly match reality. Just because you're able to solve half the DP problems, you're not going to solve any in contest. Hey everyone, it's Rear here, and in this video, I want to talk about a quote that I read. Now, I've seen different forms of this quote in similar fashions, but today, for some reason, when I saw it again, it really struck me and it really stuck with me. And the quote was, don't practice until you get something right. Practice until you can't get it wrong. And I was thinking about this in the context of Usico. And I was remembering back to when I was in Gold Division, learning dynamic programming for the first time. Um, I'm just going to shorten it for, to DP in this video. Uh, but yeah, just so you know what DP stands for, it's dynamic programming. So the first time I learned it, I was solving, you know, I was able to get a few problems. Then I took a contest and I couldn't solve any of the DP problems. And I was like pretty devastated and kind of disappointed. But I was able to solve more and more DP problems. Took another contest. Was able to get like a really easy DP problem. None of the harder DP problems. Okay. Um, I kept working on DP problems and I took more and more contests. And eventually I was able to solve the majority of the DP problems. At least at gold level at that time. Now I can solve platinum level DP problems. But at that time I was in, I was in gold division. And so I was thinking back to that story. And I was thinking about what had happened. And... What I really realized was that the problem wasn't necessarily that I wasn't able to solve the DP problems in the previous contest. I mean, obviously that's unideal and being able to solve the problems is better. But the real problem that I want to talk about in this video is the expectation versus reality. The thing was that I had expected that I would be able to solve DP problems in contest. Where did that expectation come from? Well, now looking back at the story in hindsight, and I'm sure when you're hearing it me tell it to you, you're like, well, yeah, Ria, it's super obvious. You're only able to solve a, a few DP problems, not the majority of them. Why would you expect to be able to solve any of the DP problems? And you'd be totally right. There is no, there is no logic behind that. There is no evidence behind the idea that I would be able to solve DP problems in contests. But this is something I see people do a lot of the time. And it happens a lot in silver and gold. Less so in bronze and platinum, but still a little bit. But this happens to the majority of people in silver and gold, where what they expect they'll be able to do differs from what they're actually able to do. And there's a whole delta there. And in this video, I kind of want to talk about closing that gap. Um, and so let's go back to the quote, right? The quote was, don't practice until you get it right. Practice until you can't get it wrong. And that's sort of how it applies to contest, right? I shouldn't have been doing DP problems until I got a few DP problems right. I should have been solving enough problems that I can't get gold DP problems wrong. I should have really picked it up to that level. And once I got closer and closer to that, I was able to solve more and more gold DP problems. Now, is there anything you're going to be able to do to guarantee you can never get anything wrong? Obviously not. There's, there's no thing you can do to guarantee something like that, but you can make it very, very likely, right? Most campers, they'll both solve any gold DP problem. Most platinum competitors, even gold competitors, will be able to solve any bronze level problem. And so there is a level that you can reach where you can't get it wrong. And this video is not just saying, okay, practice more until you get to the higher level and can't get it wrong. That's not what this video is about. Right? We have other videos on this channel about studying smarter, learning problem solving skills. You can go check those out. I'll link some in this corner and also in the description below. But this video is specifically about making sure that your expectations match what you're able to actually do in contest. So just because you're able to solve a few DP problems like me doesn't necessarily mean you're able to solve DP problems in contest. So the question is, when do you finally reach that point where you're able to solve DP problems in contest? So let's think about it like this. And I'm just using DP problems as, as an example, right? This could apply to any algorithm in any of the divisions. So let's say these are all the gold DP problems from all the previous years. So from you know, all the way back to 2017, all the way to current year, right? And these are going to be the, uh, let's say, easier problems. And these are going to be the harder problems. Okay, so we have our easier problems and the more difficult problems. So here's the thing. When we think about practicing from previous year's problems, whether that be from the Usico guide or just getting them from the Usico website directly or any other source, what we really have to keep in mind is that the problems are going to be scattered from all over here. And especially if you are um, practicing problems in increasing order of difficulty, you're going to be practicing problems 
that start from the easy and go up to the difficult. And that's a good thing to do. That's actually the most efficient way to get better, to go from easy to difficult. That way, you don't have to do every single problem in the middle. If you're able to solve these problems really easily, just move up here. You don't have to do every single problem in the middle, but generally going from easy to difficult is a good way to practice. But it does lead this idea that I'm going to demonstrate or that I'm going to explain, right? Where let's say that you're able to solve half the pro or one third of the problems. Well, what are the problems in contest going to be? The problems in contest are probably going to be difficulty around here, maybe one here, one here. And this y-axis or this x-axis means nothing. The only thing that matters is the y-axis. So don't worry about the x-axis. Okay, so these are the problems in contest, right? And obviously it could vary. This point could be a little higher, could be a little lower. But let's just say these are the three difficulties. So one thing to keep in mind is we don't actually know which ones will be the DP problems. They typically have one or two, but it's not guaranteed. So let's just say that these two are our DP problems. Okay, so you're able to solve, this is what, one third of the problems, but you're going to get zero problems in contest because the difficulty of the problems you're able to solve have not yet hit this part here. Let's say you're even able to solve half the DP problems. Well, you're still running into the same issue where you're not going to be able to solve any of the problems in contest. And so you're, this is a, one of the reasons that people's expectations don't exactly match reality because they're practicing an increasing order of difficulty, which is something that they should do. And I totally support that. But when you do that, you need to keep in mind about the expectations and reality. Just because you're able to solve half the DP problems, you're not going to solve any in contest. So keep in mind uh, that you need to be, able to be able to get most of them. And this goes back to practice until you can't get it wrong. If you really want to advance to platinum, with almost certainty, or advance to gold, or advance to silver, or make you single camp, you really need to practice until you reach this point. And there's other videos on this channel about practicing efficiently and all that, and definitely go check those out after the end of this video. Keep watching until the end of this video, but keep that in mind. Again, this video is about making sure your expectations match the reality of what score you get in contest. You want those expectations in reality to match, because when they do, you don't feel disappointed. I mean, you still might think, oh, there's maybe a chance that a really easy problem comes up. Okay, but you're not really banking on that. And if your expectations match the reality, you don't really feel disappointed. So if you want to be able to get DP problems in contests, make sure you're able to get the majority of them. Now, there's one more thing I want to keep track of. Let's say you're able to get all of uh, all of the problems in, in DP. So you're able to solve very difficult DP problems. But let's say that a problem comes up that requires two algorithms. Let's say it requires DP and dijkstra's. Well, now it's requiring two algorithms. And if you only know DP and you don't know dijkstra's, you're probably not going to be able to get the problem. So it's not just about being able to solve DP problems. Like DP is the most important concept in gold. If you know it, you'll do super well. But when you get to harder gold problems and platinum problems, they may require two algorithms. They may also require a higher level of problem solving skills that you're just not up to that level. And so there might be a lot of things going on, right? So let's say it requires DP and Dijkstra's. If you know DP but not Dijkstra's, you're not going to be able to get this problem. And so you don't just need to be able to get all of the DP problems. You need to be able to get all of the problems in all of the other categories. There's a bunch of categories and you're going to need to be able to basically max out all of these categories. Now we have a future video coming on what the different algorithms and data structures are for each of the divisions, and that'll essentially tell you what the categories are. But here's what I will say about all of these categories. If you don't have time to max out every single category, then one thing you can do is you can say, okay, I'm just going to learn the most common categories. And because there are four contests in a year, even if I miss a, a, a topic that comes up on one of the contests, I still have three other contests that I can do well in. So let's just say you say, okay, gold, or sorry, DP shows up a lot in gold. So I'm going to definitely, definitely learn DP. But something like Bellman Ford doesn't really show up super often. So I'm going to skip that algorithm. Okay, that's cool. And most years, gold does not have Bellman Ford at all. If you're not intent on being able to get a perfect score in every single contest, and you just want to get a good enough score to advance on one contest or a perfect score in one contest, then that strategy will definitely work. 
So you can be smart about which algorithms and data structures you want to learn. But for the ones that you do learn, max them out fully. Don't just learn, you know, half of it or two thirds and expect that just because you learned two thirds or are able to solve two thirds of the problems, that your score is going to be two out of three problems in a contest. It doesn't work like that. And we might be able to get partial credit, but you're not going to be able to get that score high enough to advance from being able to only solve the easier problems in a division. So I hope you found this video informative. I hope it helped you out in terms of getting your expectations to match the reality of what you're able to solve in contests. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button down below. Give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you next video later. Bye.